What's up guys? I uh, got a, another video here and this is um, actually something I've done again second time recording a video but this time it's not because I messed up it's because well partially because I messed up <laughs> but uh, basically um, I tried to make a video about operator and it took me like an hour and a half and I don't think anybody wants to watch an operator video for an hour and a half so I'm redoing it and I'm going to do a section at a time. So that way you can watch maybe whatever this is, five to 10 minutes, and uh, have it be about the part of operator that you wanna watch. So um, we're gonna, you know, on this one, we're just gonna do nothing except for um, the oscillators. So without further ado, let's look at Ableton. Um, <clears throat> so operator, comes with sweet so I'm sorry if you don't have sweet it's kind of something you need and I recommend you get it <laughs> um, anyways it's a it's a you know a virtual instrument that comes with it um, it does sine waves it does FM synthesis additive synthesis and subtractive synthesis I'm not going to talk about those much um, look them up uh, maybe I'll make a video in the future if people want to about them. Um, FM synthesis is basically oscillators, modulating oscillators. Additive synthesis is adding harmonics to sound. Uh, and uh, subtractive synthesis is removing harmonics from sounds. Essentially, there's a lot more to it. But you get the picture. Um, basically, I'm going to take operator. And I made this little thing. Each sound in this is operator. Every single thing you hear in here is operator. Um, the only effect is on the drums I have a, a drum bus, um, but everything is operator. There's nothing fancy here, nothing special. It was, you know, 10 minutes of sound design and then like 45 minutes of arranging. I don't know. I take that back. It was like 10 minutes of sound design, 15 minutes of arranging, but it felt like forever. Um, so basically I have a kick drum and it's going through the drum bus without it with it, it just gives it a tiny bit more punch. I have a stare. A hi-hat. Oops, <laughs> and then I have this lead. And then I have the space. All together. Happy, happy things. Okay, um, it's a very basic, you know, loop here. But just to show you that you can do any part of your song with operator, and it can get way more complicated than this. And we're going to dive in with the oscillators. So the oscillators on operator and that rhymed so that's cool the oscillators on operator um i'm pointing and you can't see it but they're they're right here this is what we're going to focus on today there's four of them uh, we're going to kind of talk about this but mainly focus on operator uh, i mean sorry <laughs> oscillators so um yes a b c and d um one two three four a b c d um ableton guys if you watch this maybe i'll talk to it talk to one of you guys uh next time about this but i have i, I wish that this was more distinctive because sometimes i forget which which part of this i'm on because it's very and maybe it's just the the setting i have for the color but it's hard to see sometimes anyways going on so right now we have four oscillators right now we only have one of them well, all four of them are on only one of them which is a or the yellow one um is actually turned up so you know just a sine wave very basic. Okay, I'm gonna play that chord a lot for some reason. I like it. Um, now, on this oscillator, um, we'll worry about this later. But your functions, your controls over here are volume. If you don't know what that is, please do some research. Um, we have this fixed button, which I think kind of does the opposite. But I'm gonna, for what my definition of fixed is, I guess. Um, they don't respond to um, 
it's basically instead of a, a pitch, it's a frequency. So no matter what note you play, it's going to play that frequency. So up here, move it down here, it's going to play the same note. Um, what that's helpful for is, well, if you just want a certain frequency to play, um, but especially use this to tune your room a little bit. See where your, um, what frequencies are you're having issues with hearing in your, you know, your spot there. Play some, you know, notes. There's an equation. Look it up. Um, and if you put in the dimensions of your room and it, you know, takes the speed of sound and everything into calculation and you can go in and, uh, see what frequencies you're going to have issues with in that room tune it to one of these let it run walk around your room see where the dead spots are where the bass is too loud or the uh, certain frequencies are too loud for you or too soft anyways that's what fixed mode does um what other than that then their notes you can play them um and course is like octaves so 0.5 is down an octave one is the octave that you're on, two is an octave up, all the way up to whatever that goes up to, 48. If you can hear that, you're probably under 40. Okay. Uh, fine tune. This is how you get your synths to sound more analog without actually being analog. One of the things that... Um, digital synths do very well is being very precise something that a lot of analog synths have are i mean the knobs that they have on there are they're not stepped so uh, sometimes when you're trying to tune uh, something you get that slightly off note and there's something about that that just gives it that feel um, So a good way to kind of demonstrate it would be to turn up a couple of oscillators all on sine waves. Sorry, I was playing in here a little bit earlier. And then just tune them up a little bit differently. Turn the volume down. They're not all perfect, so you can kind of hear there's like a little bit of movement, and it's just a sine wave. Three sine waves. If I turn this down to zero, it gets boring. If you go too far, it gets a little weird, but there's just something about that sound. All right, back to init, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, so that's what this does. Now, the main, the rest of this video is going to be focused on, um, well, this window here. I'm going to call this the um, editor window, for lack of, I, I actually don't know what this is called. Uh, oh, look, uh, oscillator waveform editor. Okay, um, so basically, here's how you pick your waveform. Sine wave, easy. We've already been listening to this. You can make your own by using this. So just this one pole all the way over on the left makes a sine wave. If I click on the next one, oops, I'm sorry. If I click on the next one over and go up, whoop, 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 whoops, you kind of get like that weird looking double sine wave. I go to the next one, you get like a triple. And then you get whatever that is, like almost like noise. So you can make some cool, interesting waveforms here, you know? You're just adding harmonics. And you can make it easier to go down to 16. Anyways, um, and so that's how you use this to make your own waveforms. Um, we'll go back to the standard sine wave. That was weird. Uh, and then uh, we'll leave it there. Um, 
but you can choose other ones. There's uh, sine, saws, squares, triangles, and noise. Noise is just this one is just noise. You don't hear any change no matter where you play it. This noise loop, you can hear pitch changes. Because it, it's like it loops it, and so it just changes how fast it loops. Anyways, uh, keep it on sign for now. Now, if you click on envelope, you get an envelope. Uh, so envelope has attack, decay, sustain, release. Attack is how long it takes to get from the moment you hit the button uh, to the loudest uh, amplitude of the sound. And then decay is how long it takes to get from the loudest amplitude of the sound to the sustain level of the sound, which the sustain is um, basically the level that you want it to play after you hit it and you're going to hold the note down. So if you want like a percussive, like a percussive sound but you, you don't want it to be at that loud volume the whole time like if I want it to be you hear that click that quick little click or rather than all the way up just having it straight it gives it more you know depth I guess I don't know what the word adjectives um or you can turn it all the way down and have like a pluck Um, and then we'll turn that back up. So that's all this is over here. Then there's the different loop modes. So let's actually do this. We're going to change this to a saw so you can hear it better. So my envelope is just going doom, just up and down. Um, oh, and I forgot the release. So the release is commonly misconstrued. Uh, it's misconstrued into like a how long after the sus after the sustain that the note will continue to play out, but that is incorrect. Um, that's a huge misconception that people have. Um, the release and it confuses some people because they under don't understand why it's at a specific level. So basically, the release is how long it takes from whatever part of the envelope that you're at, whatever part. If you're at the very peak, um, here for example, I have this decay. Uh, I have this really short pluck, so release all the way down. That's it. Release up to three seconds. I don't hear anything different. If I hold the note down, it's not continuing to play for three seconds. Um, what the release does is after you let go, no matter where you're at in here, it's somewhere in the envelope, that's how long it'll continue to play at that level. So if I can, if I can give this a uh, one second attack so it goes if I can give that a one sec oh, you can kind of hear it there I let go of it too early um, if I give it a one second attack if I can stop if I can let go at the peak of this attack then instead of the release being really quiet it'll play loud for three seconds so I missed it try it again there it is. So you get three seconds as opposed to So it's wherever you stopped. That's how long. That's where the release starts. It doesn't start at the end of the envelope. It starts wherever you let go. So I hope that made sense. Um, okay, so that's about it there. So the loops. Um, there's loop. You can choose how fast uh, this loop. We're going to turn the release back down. So this is after the entire envelope plays. Uh, this will loop 100 milliseconds after the envelope is done. You can increase it to a lot of seconds. Or really fast. So if we, we can get some weird sounds out of that. If we turn this down to 1 millisecond decay. It gets weird, but yeah, there you go. Oh, and, and peak is how loud, or how far you want the attack to go. I guess technically you can have the sustain higher than that. 
Okay, anyway, so that's what loop does. Um, then there's beat. Whoops, I should turn this back up. Um, beat means every 16th note, it's going to repeat this. Or quarter note. Or 148th note. Uh, and then there's sync, which is essentially the same thing. I don't know the difference, but there must be something. And then trigger means uh, if I hold this down, or I mean, whoops, I'm sorry, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't account for you um, for uh, taking your hand off the the note. It doesn't take that into effect. So um, if if you have the release up and you have this up here, release up more. It doesn't take into effect into effect. I'm sorry. It doesn't. Uh, consider you letting go. So if you don't want the release to take effect at all, you turn the trigger on. It'll just play the envelope as it should be. If you put it on none, and if I just flick the key, it'll play uh, and it'll sustain for 2.96 seconds after I let go. With trigger, it doesn't even think that I let go. It just plays. And that's it. It stops when it's supposed to. Too fast or too long. All right. Um, a couple of other things time and velocity. Um, so basically, the harder you hit it, the longer this scales. So, or softer, I mean. So even though it's 1.5 seconds in uh, decay and 2.96 seconds in release, if I barely tap the button, it's gonna extend that time, it, like stretches it. If I hit it really hard, it shrinks it. You can do it the opposite too if you turn it to negative. Velocity is the same thing, uh, except for, I think, the um, sustain level. Um, and then there's the key. And I also have this on trigger still. I'll turn it on and turn this down. So that's going to change the sustain volume uh, over how high or low your note is. So way down here, way up here. So it gets softer as I go down. Uh, and you can do the opposite again. And it can get softer as you go up. Okay, that's this part. Last little bit here, we're going to talk about how these oscillators interact with each other. Uh, so we, we know what the oscillator, what these knobs do. We know how to build our own envelopes and stuff. Um, I totally forgot to, to mention uh, these here. Um, which I don't think you have to have this on a certain mode. So you can repeat this four times. Whoops, go back. Interesting. So if you, this would normally be a sine wave. If I have this off, it's a sine wave. If I cut it in a, into a quarter, you get that weird shape. If you cut it into half, you get that shape. Or if I, I guess if you repeat it. And if I add a second harmonic in here. So you can get some more unique tones that way. Okay, enough of that. Um, oh, oscillator. Um, velocity. That basically changes the pitch of this via uh, by how hard you hit it. And then phase just changes where this waveform starts. Okay, now that this is done, 
for real this time. I can't waste any more time. <laughs> now that that's done, we're going to talk about how these interact. So uh, you have a sine wave. I'm going to turn this on too. If you don't have Ozone Imager, go to Isotope right now. Download it. It's free. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah, just do it. Okay? All right, done. Okay, so um, I'm going to turn this up. So I have my sine wave here. I have my cool chord that I can't stop playing. Um, so I can change that, but I'm going to keep it as a sine wave because it helps me explain this as much as I can. Um, so these, like I said, is a FM synthesizer, or these are this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> operator is a FM synth, an additive synth, and a subtractive synth. Uh, this part we're going to talk about. We we talked about additive here. Uh, now we're going to talk about FM synth. So look at here. Uh, you see my sine wave playing here. Don't mind this. This is all digital noise junk that you probably can't hear, but it's there. Just something to note. Um, uh, on an analog signal, this would be just a smooth line for the most part. Maybe a little bit of dirt, but this is all digital junk. We don't care about. We care about this. Now, FM synth is a modulator or an oscillator modulating another oscillator. So, this is a sine wave. Oscillator B is also a sine wave. So if I turn oscillator B up, it's going to modulate oscillator A. You're not going to be able to hear my, um, oscillator B because here's what oscillator B sounds like. In order for me to show you, I have to put it on this mode. Oscillator B, oscillator A. Uh, what did I do with oscillator? Oh, because of that. It's a little bit louder, but other than that, it's the same. So you're not going to be able to hear oscillator B as I bring it in. You're, what you're going to hear is what oscillator B is doing to oscillator A. If you've ever um, used Serum and you know the famous FM from B or FM from A thing, you're basically taking one waveform and using it to manipulate the next one or the, the one that you're on. This one uses four oscillators. And then another really cool plugin, just to give you a quick idea, um, my gosh, uh, what am I doing? Oh, so we're in Native Instruments, FM8. If you've ever heard of FM8, uh, geez, let me get rid of my routing stuff here. Uh, FM8 is, well, FM8 it has eight oscillators, and each one can modulate whatever one they want, however much they want. That's freaking cool. You can do a lot of stuff with FM8. Uh, unfortunately, we're we're not doing an FMA tutorial. But it's worth noting that this is a thing that exists. This is a uh, type of synthesis uh, that you can really get into. If I turn these on, you can even have uh, a modulator, I'm sorry, an oscillator modulating itself, which is nuts. Okay, that's enough. That's a synth that exists. So this one we only have four to work with and only so many ways to route them. So right now I'm going to turn B on or turn it up and you're going to hear what it does and watch this to see what it does uh, physically or I guess visually what this, how this changes that. So uh, let me go back to here. Okay. So now you see all this, all these extra harmonics. Now I'm going to turn this down a little bit. It gives it like a warmer tone than just a regular sine wave. So B is modulating A. If I turn A off, you can't hear anything. I don't know if you can hear me clicking. <laughs> um, you can't hear anything. You have to have A on. Then if, uh, so that's modulating A. C modulates B and A, I'm sorry, D modulates C. So if I turn C up, watch and listen at the same time. You can use both your senses, watch.
don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not really a keyboard player. Um, <laughs> not as good as a lot of guys that I know, but whoops, wrong button. And so you can see in here what that's doing. And then if, um, if I take up D, so now we have a ton of harmonics. If I turn B off, I just get A. Because like I said, they're going down the row. D is modulating C, C is modulating B, and B is modulating A. Now with that, all of these parameters that we've talked about can change the sound. If I have these set here, and if I just tweak with uh, D a little bit, everything I do to D affects the sound. Even though I have it up halfway, which is going through C, which is up about a quarter of the way, which is going through B, which is up only about a halfway. You c it affects the sound a lot. And then within this, I can change the oscillator to a saw wave. And so that's how that works. Um, now, we're going to leave these all the same. I'm not going to mess with any of these oscillators anymore. You can come up with your own sounds. This is our cool sound we have now. And then this last little part, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm only going to talk about this top row because it has to do with oscillators. Um, this first one is what we're doing. So you, this shows you the way that they're routed. So C and D into C, C into B, B into A. If I hit this one, um, D and C are both going to combine and modulate B, and then B is going to modulate A. Very important uh, about the routing. If one modulates one, I mean, again, if I turn off B, you don't hear all of that. If I turn off C, though, you'll still hear something. Same with D. Okay, got it. Okay, let's go. Um, this next one is uh, funky looking. So uh, C is modulating B, and uh, D and B are both modulating A. If I turn off D, kind of sounds similar to that last one that we had. Uh, and then if I turn off C, and if I turn off B, but if, but if I turn off A, nothing. All right, this next one, we have D modulating B and C, which are both modulating A. I think you get the picture now. So basically, they just change who is modulating who and in what way. Uh, the couple, there's a few that are... I guess now they start getting a little bit more interesting because now we have two outputs. So we have uh, D modulating C, which is modulating both uh, B and A. So B and A are going to sound, I mean, depending on what you have. If these are both sine waves, uh, whatever, they're going to sound the same. But if I were to change one of these to, let's say, a square wave, Then you can mix it in. And you can get some interesting stuff that way. And then uh, this one, A is going to be all by himself. So if I turn this off. But then C, uh, D is going into C, C is going into B, and that A is just uh, an extra output there. Uh, and then this one, all three are going to go, all three, C, B, and D are going to go into A. And 
and then you get the picture. Line up the colors. <laughs> the ones on the bottom are going to be what you actually hear. Uh, the ones on top and the lines going through and whatever they're on top of is going to be what it's modulating. Uh, lastly, the one I do want to talk about is this far, far right one. Uh, all oscillators are independent. So it allows you to layer a few different oscillators together. Um, and that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to talk about anything else. Um, I've already told myself. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go into depth on uh, anything else uh, for now. It's It's been about 30 minutes. I think that's good enough um, for part one. Uh, I'm still going to have to go over the LFOs, the filters, the pitch envelope, the global settings as well. Um, but I hope this helps you understand, you know, at least this part. I would really dive into the oscillators and come up with cool stuff here um, before you start trying to, you know, finish things over here on this side. This is like getting your sound down. This is, you know, kind of editing and finishing and modulating and stuff. So um, definitely play with those. I'll try to make another one um, within the next few days. Maybe, maybe next week. I don't know. I have to see. Pretty busy. But um, thank you for, you know, watching. Thanks for the downloads and stuff on the Kick Monster um effects i'm sorry not effects rack <laughs> instrument rack i got a lot of downloads on that i was kind of surprised and uh yeah anything else anything else you want to see uh post it in the comments i got a few um ideas that i have from a facebook group uh things that people want to know about ableton so operator was the first one i'm kind of going through that and uh maybe i'll make a song uh there's a few people asking about songs uh you know on facebook and a couple of other avenues um just like start to finish if that's something you want to see Maybe you should listen to my music first because <laughs> I would make something maybe like that. And I have a, a new album um, that's coming out hopefully by summertime, but it's going to be completely different than anything that you're going to hear right now. So don't even don't even listen to my music. But uh, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, have fun with it and make some music.